Welcome to another video from East Beds Bushcraft, the home of Hashtag Survival. Greetings bushcrafters and survivalists. It's Buzz here on the East Beds Bushcraft channel and it's been over a year now since I did my Carrera Hellcat uh, review when I purchased it new and I thought it was about time for an update. But before I start, when uh, I put that video up, it got viewed by thousands of people, thank you very much. Uh, I did notice a lot of comments kept mentioning how much I said the word prepper and prepping. Prepper, prepper, prepping, prepping, prepper, prepper. Well, I just want to point out, you are watching this on a Bushcraft and Survivalists YouTube channel, and the whole point of the video was all about asking whether this particular bike was any good as a bug out bike to get you from A to B in a situation and so hence why I keep saying the word prepper and prepping. Anyway onwards let's take a look at the bike. I've had no serious malfunctions with it, uh, still got the same tyres on it. Uh, I have had another puncture on it which the slime inside the tyres dealt with wonderfully. I have put the extension bars onto the steering, on, so as you can see, and for me they have been absolutely wonderful to allow me to change my grip position because I do have slightly dodgy thumb joints at my age and uh, riding with just in the standard handlebar position uh, puts weight on my wrists and on my thumb joints so having these have been great and I like the upright position you can like change your, your grip between obviously your standard grip the side grip and the top grip so I do like that that's a bonus um, overall as I say the bike has been superb no problems at all with it um, one thing that came up somebody said they were considering buying uh, the uh, Carrera Hellcat and for some reason they were told supposedly by somebody from Halfords because you buy this at Halfords uh, and I will say I am not affiliated with Halfords you know this is a totally personal review but they were told if you buy one of these you're going to have to regularly bleed the brakes on it because it has the hydraulic brake system which I've never had before never had a hydraulic brake system over a year later and they're as good as gold uh, not had to bleed them at all so I really don't know why anybody was put off being told that you need to bleed the brakes seems a bit odd to me uh, I think the only issue that I had with it which is something that I've not been used to on a, on a on a bike like this with hydraulic brakes and brake discs is that with the brake discs let's have a look at this one and it was the rear brake disc on this one uh, was squeaking so I remember I was using it for a period of time and I was getting this really annoying squeak as you pedaled. Squeak, squeak. There you go. Um, but I did a little look on the internet about that because as I say, I haven't had a bike that's had disc brake, disc brake before. And they said if you got uh, a deposit of oil or, or something that soiled the disc itself, that that could cause the squeaking. And it was a simple case of getting off the bike. If you've got a water bottle, obviously you can see I've got a water bottle holder on the frame there. Uh, so if you've got a water bottle, or if not, you've got a water source near, you could be a puddle or anything, is to literally just get some wet mud. So just use your water bottle, get a little bit of wet mud, rub it on the disc, and then ride. And then when you put your brakes on, test them a few times, the brake pads will clear the, the basically the abrasiveness of the mud on the disc will then clean off that squeaky point and by golly it did so if you are considering using uh, any bike that's got disc brakes and you want to ride pretty much silently and not attract attention so because you're not going down the road or across a field or through a wood going squeak 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 gotta love my impressions um, hop off the bike get some dirt on that disc as described bingo no squeak so it couldn't have been easier i have also been asked about the weight of the bike 
So let's take a look at that. So regarding the weight, online I looked it up and it said that it's 15.3 kilograms, which uh, is a kind of dumbbell weight if you're in the gym as a, as a chap. Um, I don't find any issues with it. So what you might find is that you come across a gateway, a style or something you need to get across while you're out using the bike across country. The way I pick this up and I find it really easy is I just take hold of the centre frame of the crossbar, pick it up, brace my arm on the central bar, and I can literally put it over my head, no problem at all. Open gates, climb over things. It's not heavy. As I say, it's only 15 kilos. Pop it back down again. Boom. I'm in my late 50s and I find it easy. I would have thought any of you ladies and gents that are in your 20s, 30s and 40s, the weight really shouldn't be an issue. Where the weight might be an issue though, talking about using the bike as a bug out bike for prepping, if you've laden the bike with saddle bag, panniers, handlebar bags, etc. and you've got a lot of your gear on this, that's not going to be easy to do what I just did and pick this up and manoeuvre it over places. Furthermore, if you've had a serious uh, uh, malfunction with the bike, say you tore a tyre and you haven't got a spare tyre etc with you, then what are you going to do with the rest of your gear? You know, you've got to get it off the bike and carry it. Or, for any reason you've had to get rid of the bike and literally just drop it and run, you're leaving all your gear behind. So as a prepper, my advice is, whatever you need which is essential, needs to fit in a backpack. If it doesn't fit in a backpack, it's not essential. You might want it, but it's not essential. I'd rather keep everything off the bike. I'm not, off, not talking about using this bike to go on a happy holiday, uh, cycling holiday around Holland or somewhere like that. I'm talking about using this as a bug out bike and if you've got your kit strapped to the bike, you may well find that you, in certain circumstances, might lose that. So if it doesn't fit in a backpack, it ain't essential. So after purchasing the Carrera Hellcat, I let my family have a go on it and they were so impressed that my son bought one. And not only was my son impressed, but my wife was too. And so she bought one as well. Now one further question was brought up on my last video comments and that was that the ladies version, which uh, Halford sells, is apart from the colour, exactly the same as the men's version. That's not exactly the case. Overall, it pretty much is identical. As you can see from my wife's one, she's put the extension bars on as well. She has the same rear mud guard. She's added a motion detector alarm on the bike, which is quite handy. Um, so overall the same. But if you haven't already spotted it, here, if you look at the frame below the saddle, there, and then I look back at mine, there you go, you can spot the difference. It's subtle, but actually the crossbar on the ladies is set a little lower than on the men's bike. And my wife, who had initially been riding my bike to give it a go to decide whether or not she wanted to buy one, liked it but felt that it was too tall on the frame. So she literally went all the way from Bedfordshire up to Kings Lynn to track this particular bike down. You can see here behind the saddle, the gap here is more than the gap on mine here. And she prefers that, just that slight little drop on the drop on that crossbar uh, so she can get over, the, uh, cock her leg over the bike and get on the bike, um, makes all the difference. So for those people who are wondering about the difference, they're both the same wheel size. So for those people wondering about the difference between the ladies and the gents frame, there is a difference. And that's it. So there we have it, my Carrera Hellcat update video. Um, I still find it a great bike. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, I know that they're kind of like a bit like hen's teeth at times from all the comments I've had on my previous video. Uh, if you're looking for a substantial, well-built, sturdy bug out bike, then, well, I'd recommend it.
If you've got any other recommendations, by all means put them in the comments. If you've got ever, any other questions, put them in the comments. But uh, all I'd like to say is thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel because it helps me a lot. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video and subscribe to the East Beds Bushcraft channel. See you all again soon.